Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. Today, I'm gonna share a really epic tip with you on how to fix any tricky white balance on the raw level in either Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. So here's your overall before. Looks pretty bad, right? We got some orange, we got some blue. Here is your after. Look at how that blue is now made beautiful neutral color that actually matches a lot better to the beautiful ambiance of this cathedral. Let's go ahead and jump into Adobe Camera Raw. I'll show you exactly how I do this. So I recently shared this tip in the interior architecture essentials course that I did on F64 Elite. It's a really cool tip to help you control white balance that's in uh, a scene. So for instance, here I am in saint Emilion in France, and I've got this beautiful church that I was photographing, the interior of this church. Absolutely gorgeous place to be. But I have mixed color temperature happening and mixed lighting happening on the image. What you'll notice is that there's some nice yellowing back here that looks like it might be more of like your, um, your light that's bouncing in from the stained glass windows and around the room. And then we have this kind of blue light that just isn't looking that great. And this can happen because of multiple different reasons. We could have different types of lights that are being used in the same room. We could have exterior light, actual light from the sun that's coming into the room, and then artificial light inside the room, and that makes white balance practically a nightmare. It's almost impossible for you to control that, whether you use auto white balance or even some controlled white balance within your camera, because we have two different light sources casting two different colors. So how do we fix that? Well, if we were to come over here to our temperature slider and say, you know what, I want this blue to be a little bit more uh, on the yellow side. So let me move my temperature over. Well, that starts to work, but then everything else in the room gets this really nasty yellow. And it actually becomes almost more of a combination of yellow and blue to make a greenish effect than to actually make it yellow. So let's just change this back to as shot. Now, if I were to come over here to my tint and try to add some green to this, or maybe even some more magenta to this while bringing over that temperature to try and compensate for that green that's coming through, we still get this hideous yellowing happening in the background. So let's go back to as shot. So how do we fix this? Well, you can do this in the raw format on your raw image without even heading into Photoshop, which is absolutely phenomenal. And it has to do with brushes in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. If you're in Lightroom, you can do this as well. And not only the brush, but also the brush controls on the luminosity or luminance mask that we're gonna see here. And actually we're gonna be using a color range mask. So if I pop up over here to the adjustment brush and I'm gonna zero out all these settings. So if you have settings here from a previous uh, edit that you did, just go ahead and press maybe the plus on the exposure and then drop that exposure down. What I'm mainly concerned with is adding a color to the image. Look at this right here where you see color, okay? And we, you see this, this is a colored brush essentially, where if I were to select any color, I could select the color and start painting on the image. So I'm gonna click on this color right here and I'm gonna go ahead and just select any color at this point. I'm, it really can be any color because of how I do this. So I'll, I'll bring this up into this orange color. I'm basically trying to match the color that I have back there in the background. So something like that. So then if I start painting with that brush on here, you're gonna see that everything starts to get that orangish yellow. And it's doing it in like a mixture type of way. It's not just applying this straight orange color over top of the image. It's just applying the orange over all the different colors and kind of blending those colors together. So if I click over here on this color, we can change this color to anything we want now and you'll see how it kind of mixes in in the image. You can get some really awesome results with many different things with this. But I wanna use this to tone down that color temperature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this over until that color temperature of that blue starts to get toned down and gives me more of a neutral type color. And that's actually gonna be more in this orange range here. Notice how the saturation is only at 48. If I bring the saturation up, it makes everything really orange. So this is kind of the way I mix, almost like a painter would mix on the canvas with color to tone down that white balance This just is not working for me. So if I press okay and commit to that, you can see that if we look at the before, here's the before, it's got that blue color cast, here's the after. Now that looks great, but check this out. We have this range mask here. So turn on your mask here and make sure you're clicked on that brush. And you can see that that brush with that mask selected is just spatting all over the photograph. And we don't want that. We don't want orange to go where orange is already. We just want it to cover up that blue area. So what we do is we go to the range mask here and we choose a color 
range mask. And then we take our eyedropper and we'll click this on any of those bluish type colors in the image. So for now, I'm going to turn my mask off. The hotkey for that in Adobe Camera Raw is Y. I will turn that mask off and I'll click on this blue color right here and I'll maybe shift click on another blue color right here. So that's going to select both of those areas of blue to be the colors that it uses for the range mask. So now if I press the Y key, look at it now. The range mask here, if we bring this down, is saying this is the only amount of blue that I'm going to put this orange onto. If we bring it all the way up, it's going to shoot that orange all over the place because we brought the range of what that blue is up in that range that we've selected. So I'll bring this down. It's easier to see what's being affected here as we bring this range mask down. It's basically saying that all of these colors that are remotely close to this blue, this is where I'm going to put that orange. If we press Y and turn our mask preview off, you can see how this is affecting our image on the fly. So if there's other of those blue colors that are in there that you want to grab as well, just make sure that you have that color selected here and press and hold shift and click on a different color that is close to that blue that is giving you that offset. And I'll click another one. So you can either sh shift click and just randomly click to grab a dot, or if you click and drag, it will select a a variance of colors that are like that color blue. Press and hold shift and drag on another area and it'll give you another selection of, of that bluish color. So now if we go into that color again and we move and modify that color around, you can see how we're altering the state of the blue that is in this image, that blue color cast that's in the image. So if we press OK, that's a pretty nice little neutral right there. The other great part about this is that now we have that blue that's selected. Not only do we have access to changing the color of it, we can also change the lightness and darkness of that color blue. So with that blue, we can make it more of a highlight, a really nice, beautiful highlight there, and maybe tone down some of the shadows that are in that color blue. And this is all happening on that raw level. So if we look at the overall before, here it is. Look at the after. We haven't even done any of our other processing on this photograph yet, and we're already starting off with a much better white balance in our image. So just to do a little recap and review, when would I use this? I use it on very tricky lighting circumstances. I'll use it in circumstances like this where the white balance is just off. Again, I talked about this in the course that I did on interior architecture that you can find a link in the description on this YouTube video. If you're on the website, you will see a link somewhere there that will tell you how to get to that course. I talk about all kinds of different topics. But this tip is really great when you have a color that you just can't figure out why it's not working with the rest of your image and you want to make those colors match a little bit better. This is a a beautiful way to do it. Know that you can always alter that color once you place it down. So the, the main thing to take away here is just throw a color on the image, then get the color you want dialed in just right, then narrow down that color selection by using the color range tool and you will get spot on white balance correction in a very custom way. Again, my name is Blake Rudis. If you like this, please comment on it, share it, and tell a friend. Spread the love because this is a tip that I know that your friends are going to want to see. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. I have great content like this on my YouTube channel, and I'd love for you to see it more often. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. 